Good evening, calculus students. Hope everyone is having a fantastic day. Yeah? Okay. <clears throat> All right, so today we were going to be talking about the product and the quotient rule. Now, yesterday we discussed the power rule. And we learned that the power rule means that you can take a power and you can drop it in front of a thing and then you can drop the power by one and you can do calculus, yes? Okay. So, let's take a look at a, at a couple of different things here. The first, it says find the derivative of y equals x times x squared plus 1. So there's two methods to this, really. Uh, you can multiply and then, take, then use the power rule, which is what I would recommend. So if I actually distribute this thing out, I'll end up with y equals x cubed plus x, right? And you take its derivative, y prime. Um, I want to want to show you something real quick. y prime could also be written as, we said this yesterday, dy dx, that's the derivative of y with respect to x. That's how we say that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's going to be 3x squared plus 1. Okay, so just notice that if the function is a cube, if it's a cubic function, the derivative should be a quadratic, right? We've been talking about that for quite a while now. You know you're dropping the power, so it should always be one power less. Okay, now the, the second, the alternative to that, um, just to kind of show you what, what might happen is, what happens if you took the derivative of each of these on their own and then multiplied them together? Like, what if you took the derivative of this and the derivative of this? It's kind of like distributing your derivative. I guess you could think of it that way. But let's see what happens. dy dx, uh, the derivative of y with respect to x. If I take the derivative of the first one, isn't that 1? And then what's the derivative of x squared plus 1? Well, that's 2x to the first power, so 2x. And that's a 0, so it's just 2x. So you multiply those together. So if I do it this way, my derivative is 2x. Now, I wanted to do this specifically to show you that you cannot just take the derivative of the first, the derivative of the second, and then multiply them together. That is not how that works, okay? That is not how that works. This is not okay. Here, your derivatives do not match. Do not match. Right? So this method does not work. Method 2 does not work. I want you to write that down. So here's the problem. When we were going through and we were doing these, we, we came up with this issue of what happens when you're multiplying two functions together, like x and x squared plus 1. Some of the functions, like this one, you could do pretty easy by just distributing your x, and then you can apply the power rule. But there's got to be some way to work this to where if the functions are complicated enough, I don't have to distribute. You know what I mean? So... We came up with, we, I wasn't there when it happened, but they, the uh, purveyors of the calculus, came up with the product rule. Product rule is what happens if you're trying to take a derivative of two equations that you're multiplying together. So the derivative, d with respect to x, your derivative with respect to x, of f times g, if you're multiplying two things together, is f times g prime plus g times f prime. f times g prime plus g times f prime. It's the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So it's kind of like you're, you're taking, you are still taking the derivative of, of each one individually, but then you're multiplying them together with the originals. Okay? So let's see what, what this would actually look like if we were to use it. Now, example one is, is a perfect example of being way too complicated to actually multiply out. If you were to multiply this thing out, 
Uh, you'd have you'd have one, two, three, four, five, six different terms, and bleh. nah. Um, let's get away from that, and instead, let's do it this way: h prime of x, the derivative of h. It's the first times the derivative of the second. So the first is x squared plus x plus one times the derivative of the second, which is 2x plus 0, so 2x, plus the second, x squared plus 2, times the derivative of the first, 2x plus 1. Derivative of the first is 2x to the first power plus 1, the number in front of x. Ding! Let's go through and simplify this. This will be 2x cubed plus 2x squared plus 2x. Plus, over here you have 2x cubed plus x squared plus 4x plus 2. Pause the video if you need to catch up. Combining my like terms here, I've got 2x cubed and 2x cubed, that's 4x cubed. 2x squared and x squared is 3x squared. 2x and 4x is 6x plus 2. Now with this one, it the, the thing you have to keep in mind about the product rule is it comes in really handy when you're dealing with much larger equations. Um, it's always going to be easier to take a derivative, then multiply the equations through like we did here. Then it's going to be to try and multiply two equations together, then come up with the derivative that way. Now that, that could be used as a backup, I suppose. The rule that I usually say for it, if there is one term in one of the equations, only one item, kind of like in number two and in the first example up at the top. You see how there's only one term outside of the parentheses? There's only one term in F, you could call it, since this is F times G. F is only one item. And if that's the case, just multiply it through. Okay? So here's what I'm going to do. X, the square root of X, remember, is X to the one-half power. So that's times 3x squared minus 1. Just multiply it through and see what happens. You've got x to the 1 half times 3x squared. That's going to be 3x. And remember, if you're multiplying the x, if you're multiplying these together, you're going to add their exponents. So this is 4 halves plus 1 half. 5 halves minus x to the one-half power. Okay? So it's, it's going to be a lot easier just to take the derivative of this than it would be to multiply through. So again, my rule in general, keep in mind there's exceptions to every rule, but my rule in general is if there's one term out here, that's the one that I'm going to just multiply through and do the power rule. So sometimes it is actually easier to do the power rule. And something I want to just point out, y prime is dy dx. dy dx is just the, uh, well, it's the more appropriate term. You're taking the derivative with respect to x, blah, blah, blah. Anyway. Okay. So for this one, we've got three times, and let's take the derivative of this. It's three times five halves x. And if we took one away from that, so we took 2 over 2 away. We'd have to the 3 halves power minus, bring down your 1 half, x to the negative 1 half. Ooh, this is getting fun. All right, so let's simplify here. dy dx equals, this is 3x to the 3 halves over 2. Minus, now since this is negative, I'm going to go ahead and send all of that to the bottom. 
The 2 is already down here on the bottom, so it'll be 2x to the 1 half. 2x to the 1 half. Again, since that x to the negative 1 half is a negative 1 half, I'm going to send it to the bottom here. Now you can actually, um, oh I'm sorry, I forgot something here. It's 3 times 5, this should be 15. I can't believe I forgot that. 3 times 5 is 15. Okay, now if you, if you wanted to, you could actually combine this and you could actually get common denominators. I'm going to just write this as a side note. If you multiply this side by x to the 1 half over x to the 1 half, to get common denominators, you'd end up with 15x squared minus 1 over 2x to the 1 half. Um, honestly, if you want to leave it like this, that's fine. If you want to go that one extra step down here and simplify it a little bit more, combine like terms, get it in common denominators, that's fine. Just remember that sometimes it is easier to distribute and use the power rule than it is to use the product rule. Okie day, okie day. Flip it page. So you know if you've got a product rule, you're probably going to have to have a quotient rule. Now the product rule is really no big deal on order because it's a plus sign. So you could do FG prime plus GF prime. You could also do GF prime plus FG prime. Because it's a plus sign, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be the same every time because multiplication is commutative. That means it can move around like 2 plus 3 is the same thing as 3 plus 2. Okay, Subtraction is not that way. You know that. 3 minus 2 is not the same thing as 2 minus 3. So this one is extremely important that you get the order of this right. So here's, here's how we kind of remember it. G is the bottom, F is the top, right? Bottom times the derivative of the top minus top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom squared. So if you can remember, bottom D top minus top to bottom. Bottom to top minus top to bottom. Bottom D top minus top D bottom and then over the bottom squared. Okay, Bottom to top, top to bottom. Bottom to top, top to bottom. Let's do this. So dy dx, dy dx is going to be equal to, it says find dy dx, so that's the notation I'm going to use. If this said find y prime, I'm going to use y prime. Doesn't matter, it's the same thing. So I'm going to find the bottom times the derivative of the top x cubed plus 6 times the derivative of the top, 2x plus 1 minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, 3x squared is the derivative of the bottom, drop your 3, subtract 1 from your exponent, and the 6 is a constant, so it goes to 0, over the bottom squared. Okay. Don't freak out. This isn't as complicated as it looks. dy dx is equal to. Let's go ahead and do these bad boys here. You got 2x to the fourth plus x cubed plus 12x plus 6. Now the minus here you're going to have to be very careful on um, because the minus is going to go to every term in here, right? So multiply them first. Multiply them first. So we got 3x to the fourth, right? Plus 3x cubed minus 6x squared and then go through and distribute your negative sign. This is all over x cubed plus 6 
squared. Now go through and distribute your negative. 